Joining us now is Assistant Republican Leader in the Tennessee House, Representative Mark Cochran. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Leader Cochran. In comments to a local paper, you said that you had no problem with the three representatives protesting, but, quote, you cannot take over the floor of the House of Representatives because it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the people of Tennessee. Does the punishment fit the transgression here? Was expulsion the right way to go? Lindsay, yeah, th thank you for, for having me uh, th this evening. And, and yeah, as I stated before, I think it's just, again, that, that floor belongs to the people of Tennessee. There are rules of decorum in place to ensure that, that all voices are heard. Now, often uh, in, in the General Assembly here in Nashville, there is, uh, you know, we, we have very spirited debate. Um, and, and that's a welcome part of the legislative process. But when you have one or just a few representatives hijack the floor um, for their own purposes, that silences the rest of Tennessee because that that is where the business of the people is conducted. And, and so so when you hijack that for for nearly an hour, yes, I think that is a that's that's an that's an insult to the institution and really an insult to the people of Tennessee. So so that is that's ultimately why I landed on the side of, of expelling all three members. Do you still land on that side today? Any anything that you would have done differently knowing the outcome at this point? Yes, ma'am. Hey, I, I, I still I still believe that I, I'm I'm very honored to be a part of the Tennessee General Assembly. And I think this is this is a um, th this is a, a body that is very hallowed and, and it has uh, hundreds of years of tradition here. And, and again, it needs to be respected. The rules of decorum need to be de need to be respected. Um, if you don't have that, it's just whoever screams the loudest. And, and that's not how a republic works. Um, we, we all represent nearly 70,000 people um, and our constituents need to be heard as well. And so, again, when you when you shut down debate, when you shut down dialogue, that that's not bringing attention to your issue. It's just silencing the rest of us. Um, so absolutely, I do. I do stand by that vote because, again, I, I feel like that is that is defending uh, the people of Tennessee and ensuring that everyone's voices are heard. So I, I just want to go back to your quote, though, here, because when you say that the House of Representatives belongs to the people of Tennessee, and when we're looking at the statistics there, more than half of the residents of Tennessee say that they'd like to see change. So would one be able to argue then that those three were, in fact, representing the people of Tennessee? Well, Lindsay, you know, what, what, what I would say is, you know, we can, de we can debate change, and we do that every day here. Um, and, and we use the the, the 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 proper rules of debate. We have committee hearings. We have we have debate on the on the House floor. By the way, if you look at how many minutes each of those members have spoken in the last few months, it's hours. Actually, they've spoken more on the House floor, I think, in the last few months, time wise, more than I have in the last five years. And, and so they 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 speak on the House floor often. And, and so. Um, but, but but again, you have to you have to follow those rules of decorum. And, and seventy five of us, seventy five Republican members, were also sent here by the people of Tennessee. And so for them to claim that they speak for the majority is in direct conflict with the last election. Uh, according to the people of Tennessee, the Republican Party and the values it represents speaks for the majority of Tennesseans. Uh, Justin Jones, Justin Pearson, and Gloria Johnson have all become household names since the two of them, uh, the two of the three of them were expelled just a week ago. Are there any regrets about elevating these state lawmakers through that expulsion only to see them now back on the House floor, but with much greater attention and potentially power? Right. You know, yeah, I think the, I think the biggest. Um, yeah, I think the biggest shame of 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 of, of what occurred two weeks ago, what happened on on March 30th is when they when they hijacked the House floor of the state of Tennessee, it took attention off uh, of six victims uh, of a school shooting. And it took, it took attention off the, the victims' families. I, I think that that is, um, again, one, one, of, one of the biggest travesties of, of, of their actions. It took attention off of, a, off of a very important issue, one that we were already working toward, one, one that we were finding solutions, and it put them on, it, it put that attention on them, and, and so I think I think that um, the, if there's a regret, I, I think I think that is, that that is it, and it, and and that you know again, um, their actions place attention on themselves rather than the victims of that of that horrible tragedy at Covenant School.
So to that point, let's get to the substance of what the three representatives were protesting. Today is just the 102nd day of 2023, and according to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 147 mass shootings in that time. You, of course, represent the people of Tennessee, and children were also in the state house the day that led to the expulsion. They and their parents were protesting as well, chanting, save our children. As I was referencing earlier, a recent poll of Tennessee parents found more than 70 percent believe that schools would be safer if background checks are expanded to be required for all gun sales. Do you support that measure? Right. And, and, and you know, as far as what the, the people of Tennessee support and the parents of Tennessee support, the most recent Vanderbilt poll reflects that over 80 percent of parents in Tennessee believe that what would make our schools the safest is if every one of them has an SRO. And that's exactly what Tennessee is doing. We're, we're, we're funding that to the tune of $200 million. We just pass, passed a bill to set up the framework for that. Interestingly enough, it was a, a bipartisan support, I believe, received maybe it received over 90 votes. Ironically, however, the three representatives who claim to be the voices of children of, across Tennessee voted against that comprehensive school safety bill. Um, and so, again, Tennessee was already working towards solutions to make our students safer. Unfortunately, you had three representatives that wanted the spotlight on themselves and did, not, and did not actually want to be a part of the conversation to find solutions. Firearms recently became the leading cause of death for children and teens in this country. Tennessee's Republican governor has called on the General Assembly directly to toughen gun restrictions. It's now been more than two weeks since the school shooting at the Covenant School. What specific reforms are you prepared to support? Yeah, Lindsay, and we're, we're prepared to work with the governor's office. We're, we're looking at no, no specific bill has been filed at this time. In, anything that the state of Tennessee passes, it's going to be something that honors due process. And, and we're, we're, gonna, we're going to ensure that, um, again, before anyone's right to bear arms is infringed upon, that there is due process, that, that, that's, not, that that's not done lightly. Um, there are uh, parts of the code perhaps that we can look at regarding um, regarding mental illness and, and ensuring that that criminals or those who are dangerous do not have firearms. Um, but again, all of that is going to lead with due process. N no one can just arbitrarily take someone's firearms. That's a protected constitutional right. But we are sure. always but we are always willing to look at sections of the code to see what can be strengthened. Um, and again, specifically those sections regarding regarding mental illness and, and those who who may have a violent record. We, we, we want to make sure that those people do not have guns and, the, and those folks who are dangerous are not able to harm others. Uh, Leader Cochran, asking you specifically right now, would you support outlawing assault weapons? You know, Lindsay, I'll be honest with you. I, again, I don't believe that 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 is the issue. I think I think the issue is you want to keep you want to keep guns out of the hands of those who who are adjudicated as mentally ill and and, and criminals. Um, we we can do that. We can have that conversation. Um, Tennessee has strong laws about that currently. I, I think it's, it's it, we have potential to close loopholes and to strengthen them. That's what we're looking at currently. And, and you would sir, personally support background checks? Background checks already occur, actually. Um, again, you, when you purchase a gun now, you have a background check. And lastly, for people, because I know that, that the Republicans in Tennessee have pushed back on allegations of, of racism, uh, I am curious why you feel that Gloria Johnson uh, was uh, allowed to stay and not expelled because she has said herself that she felt that it was simply because of the color of her skin that, that she was not uh, expelled. Uh, curious your response to that. Yeah, I, and, and I found her response very curious. You know, you, you look at the at the vote tally there, you had 65 members vote to expel Gloria Johnson. So that's that's one vote shy. And, and what I find so interesting is she is she standing in solidarity um, with Representative Jones and Repres Representative Pearson now. But if you go back and you watch her interview or excuse me, you watch her uh, testimony from the House floor, she spent nearly an hour distancing herself from them, saying that she was not the one holding the bullhorn. She wasn't the one chanting. So. She wants to claim that it's about race. Perhaps it's just because she threw her two friends under the bus. But just to go back to my original question, just curious why you think that she ultimately was not expelled. What made her different from her two colleagues? Right. And, 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 I, and I voted to expel all three. And, and perhaps, you know, if you spoke to those members who voted the other way, I don't know. Perhaps they would say that maybe she made her case, you know, more strongly. I, I could not. I can't answer for them again as, as I voted to expel all three. Appreciate the and, academic, and as, did, as did the majority of our caucus. I appreciate the academic discussion. Leader Mark Cochran, really appreciate you coming on the show and, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lindsay. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.